Hello and welcome to the Mobile Youth Show. I'm your host, Freddie Benjamin. And today we're going to talk about Hurricane Sandy and some really interesting ethnographic insights into what the hurricane has taught us about people's behavior and the role of mobile in our lives. Now, late last month, Hurricane Sandy wreaked havoc across the Caribbean, Bermuda, and parts of the U.S. and Canada. Uh, Hurricane Sandy is the largest Atlantic hurricane on record, costing the global economy $50 billion in losses due to direct damages and indirect damages like business closures. But amidst the story of loss and destruction, um, there is also a story about people's need to connect with others you know, in times of loss. Our hidden social drives are made apparent in extreme situations like this. As Hurricane Sandy left part of New York City with no power and no internet, guess what the residents did? They turned to pay phones to connect with their loved ones and to let them know that they were still okay. Mobile networks were not functional, so your most recent iPhone or Samsung Galaxy was rendered quite useless. No SMS, no Facebook, no Instagram. Instead, long queues were formed in front of pay phones, where, for many people, this was the first time using the age-old contraption. They lost coins while teaching themselves how to use it. But finally, they were able to make that call. So why is this significant for the mobile industry? Well, we live in a world where smartphones and mobile internet keep us connected at all times to everyone. We take this for granted and start focusing on smartphone features like the camera or the apps. We talk a lot about emerging trends in mobile. How will location-based apps change the way we shop? How will augmented reality change the way we look for information? But during Hurricane Sandy, people lost the technology that kept them connected. But what they did was look for other ways to get connected via payphones. The technology was gone, but the social drive to stay connected was still there. Now, this should really force all researchers, managers, and executives to rethink the value of the products and services they provide to customers. Is it just another nice-to-have luxury item, or does it fulfill their fundamental drive to connect with each other? What Hurricane Sandy also showed us is that sometimes the solution to connect people is a lot simpler than creating a new app or inventing new technology. Lucy Wachowiak, an 11-year-old girl in Hoboken, New Jersey, was one of the few who still had power and internet after the hurricane. A first course of action was to start a pop-up internet cafe, also providing free charging stations for people who needed to charge their laptops and mobile phones. It's a grand gesture showing lots of maturity from an 11-year-old girl. But what is most interesting about Lucy's pop-up internet cafe is that she charged people to raise money for Red Cross to help those affected by the hurricane. And talk about creating a social space that brings people together under a common cause. At the same time, brands on Twitter were encroaching upon the Sandy hashtag promoting store sales with hurricane-themed tweets, much to the resentment of those severely affected by the hurricane. For mobile brands like Nokia or Verizon, they could have provided backup connection points, much like what Lucy did, to help people affected by Sandy. The reason why no one in these organizations thought about providing these connection points was that they are focused on the next marketing campaign and the next product launch. And no one is thinking about fulfilling the social drivers of people. No one is thinking along the lines of how to connect people. So really, the greatest lesson Hurricane Sandy can teach the mobile industry is to realize that the handsets and the networks and the apps, they are all mere tools which help people fulfill the need to connect. What they need to pay attention to is whether or not they are helping people connect with each other or are they interrupting it instead. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you for listening. Join us again tomorrow for more insights into mobile and youth cultures.